I'm really stepping up my game. These bitches gotta start paying me for this. Can't get no more free, Randy. Got everything I got. Hey guys, it's Rogue RMD, and today I'm gonna go through an MRI of the knee. So let's go ahead and start. Here I have the sagittal set of images. I've got a proton density set of images here on the left. These are proton density weighted. And I have a T2 weighted set of images here on the right with pad suppression. So basically gonna go ahead and start looking at the menisci. I'm gonna start with the lateral meniscus. So here I can find the root of the lateral meniscus. This is the anterior horn. And I'm seeing this as a dark black triangular structure, this normal appearance. I trace that out to the body segment and then come into the posterior horn here and trace that to the root. And I'm basically looking for any evidence of a tear. Now you also use the fluid weighted sequence to see if there's any fluid intersecting between the fibers of the structure. And I'm not seeing any evidence of tear. I then move over to the medial meniscus. Here's the root of the medial meniscus coming out here. And I can see the anterior horn here, triangular structure coming out to the body. And then here's the posterior horn coming into its root. So basically no evidence of meniscal tear. And I'm basically going to go ahead and move on. Next on the checklist is the ACL and PCL. Here is the ACL. You can see it coming off the, this is the lateral intercondylar region. And it basically courses uh, kind of straight and then kind of, uh, kind of at an angle and sort of onto the anterior tibia here. And this is normal to actually see this waviness in the fibers. You can see on the fluid weighted sequence, there's increased signal. There's kind of a wide footprint of insertion. And that's actually a normal finding. So this is not torn. Uh, when this tears, it basically kind of completely rips apart and you'll see a very abnormal looking uh, tendon structure here. So this is normal ACL. Um, contradistinction with ACL, here's the PCL. The PCL is kind of more cord-like and thick and it's coming off the intercondylar region of the femur. And it basically courses posteriorly and then kind of almost turns 90 degrees and inserts right here on the very posterior aspect of the tibia. So that's the PCL and that's also intact. No evidence of fluid or tearing on the fluid weighted sequence. So after we do the menisci and the cruciate ligaments, I then go to the extensor mechanism. So here's the extensor mechanism. That's basically the set of structures that become very tight when you extend the knee. So here is the quadriceps tendon and that's inserting on the patella. No evidence of fluid or tearing on the fluid weighted sequence. And then the infrapatellar tendon is basically inserting onto the tibial tubercle. And this is all intact. This is all normal. No evidence of fluid or tearing. So I go ahead and continue my search. All right, so next on the checklist are the medial and lateral supporting structures. So I just want to orient you again here. I'm basically looking at a coronal view of the knee. This is a T2 weighted fat suppressed image. And here I can find the MCL as this dark black structure and it's inserting onto the tibia here, inferior to the joint line. And I just want to point out here, you can see how intimately it's related to the meniscus here. And this is all normal. There's no fluid uh, cutting into the ligament here. So the MCL is intact. And then I'm going to go do the lateral supporting structures. And so instead of just being one structure like the MCL, there's three on the lateral side. There's the true LCL, which is a ligament going from the femur here to the head of the fibula here. So that's intact. And then there are two tendinous structures. Anteriorly, we have the IT band or iliotibial band, and it's inserting here onto the proximal tibia. And as we come posteriorly, we see this kind of a little bit wide tendon here, and that's coming off the biceps femoris muscle, and that inserts there on the head of the fibula. Okay, so we looked at the medial and lateral supporting structures. The next thing I'm going to look at is basically the bones. So just want to point out the anatomy of the bones here. You can notice that there's the dark cortex here, and there's the medullary portion here, which has kind of an intermediate gray. And this is a fat suppressed set of images, but I'm fluid weighted. So within this marrow space, the marrow fat has been suppressed. So anything that's high signal here is going to be abnormal. Uh, that's basically going to be some sort of traumatic injury or contusion or bone marrow edema, to put it in a more general form. And I basically scan all the osteostructures looking for that increased signal that could be there. I basically do the lateral femoral condyle, I do the medial femoral condyle, I then do the whole tibia, the tibial plateau here, and then do the head of the fibula. I'm basically looking for any abnormal increased signal that would indicate marrow edema that I need to figure out what the cause of that is. So after I look at the bones, I then kind of pay my attention to the cartilage. Here you can sort of see the cartilage of the lateral femoral condyle here. You can see there's bone here and then there's this difference in signal here. This is the cartilage. And it's basically a plate that sits on top of the bone. And of course, it allows for frictionless movement within the joint. 
So disease of the cartilage is basically, it starts at the surface. There can be irregularity at the surface. Eventually, there can be some fluid that kind of intersects between the cartilage and the bone, and the cartilage can flake off. So I'm basically looking for any abnormal fluid signal uh, dissecting the cartilage or any broken off pieces of cartilage or anything that looks like it could get loose. I basically split up the knee into the lateral compartment, the medial compartment, and look at them on this coronal set of images. Lastly, then I do the patellofemoral compartment. Here you can see the patellar cartilage. This is actually the thickest cartilage in the body, about four millimeters thick. And I basically look at the patellar cartilage for any disease and then move into the femoral trochlea, which you can see here. So these are the two structures that basically glide on one another as you flex and extend the knee. So we're pretty much almost done. The uh, last couple things I look at before I close off the case, I look for the intraarticular fluid, try to rule out a joint effusion. And here you can see a normal amount of intraarticular fluid as this high signal here. And I also like to look for a Baker's cyst. So I basically find the semimembranosus muscle, which is right here. I basically trace that down into where it comes into contact with the medial head of the gastroc, which is here. And a popliteal cyst or Baker's cyst basically originates right there. And a patient does not have one, so there's no Baker's cyst. All right, so there you go. That's my basic search pattern for a knee MRI. Uh, please let me know if you have any comments or suggestions or any ideas for future videos. This is basically the template I use to report my knee MRIs. So you can take a look at that. Uh, once again, this is Srovar MD. Thank you for watching.